Our first speaker is Rupert Raj. Rupert, come on up. Uh, so, Rupert Raj. Uh, Rupert Raj is a Canadian, Eurasian, pansexual, trans man. He's a gender specialist, a psychotherapist, a consultant, a clinical researcher, an educator, a professional trainer, a writer and editor with 45 years of trans activism across Canada and the US. He co-organized the first uh, Canadian uh, Professional Association for Transgender Health, the CPATH, in uh, 2008. He's published work in the International Journal of Transgenderism in 2002, and he co-edited the Trans Activism in Canada Reader 2014. Do you still have a table out for that? He's had a table out through the conference. The books are gone, but there are some flyers. Okay, there are some flyers. Uh, that's great that you sold all the books. Um, he's received two Lifetime Achievement Awards, uh, Toronto's Access and Equity Human Rights Pride Award and the Steinhardt Ferrero Award, and he was in inducted into the Canadian Lesbian and Gay Archives. So I know you just applied, but help me once more to welcome Rupert Raj. Thanks, Aaron. So before I start, I just want to say I was at the Harry Benjamin Memorial uh, in New York in January 1987, and I knew Harry, and he was what we call the father of transsexuals and was truly an architect of hope for myself and my fellow trans sisters and trans brothers, and we owe a lot to him, a lovely man. So hello, everyone, from the Transgender Archives Conference here in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. And thank you to Professor Aaron DeVore and his wonderful team for putting on such a fabulous conference. And congratulations again, Aaron, for being the first and only so far transgender chair in the world. A great accomplishment. So I just, I just want to also uh, officially recognize two of my fellow Canadian trans activists here today who haven't had a chance to present at this conference. Susan Gapka over here, can you stand? And Martine Stonehouse. My fellow trans, these are my fellow trans lobby group members and they were instrumental in getting sex reassignment surgery relisted under the Ontario Health Insurance Plan in Ontario in 2008 after it had been delisted for 10 years. We were known as the Three Musketeers. <laughs> so uh, thank you for your years of trans advocacy, Martine and Susan, and perhaps you may present at a future conference here. So a little bit about myself, uh, Rupert Raj. I'm a 64-year-old Canadian Eurasian, Polish and East Indian, androgynous pansexual trans man. I've been on an indefinite medical leave since last May due to um, work-related stress, an unhealthy workplace culture, burnout, chronic burnout, vicarious traumatization, clinical depression, and generalized anxiety requiring psychotropic medication and ongoing psychotherapy. So I left my job as a psychotherapist at Sherman Health Center in Toronto last September, uh, actually last May, where I counsel transsexual, transgender, genderqueer, intersex, two-spirit, and gender-questioning adults and gender nonconforming teenagers and their loved ones since 2002. I also had a part-time private practice RR consulting on and off from 2002 into 2015. I began doing trans advocacy in the same year, 1971, that I transitioned from female to male at age 19, which coincided with my first year of university in Ottawa. This was uh, just three years after my parents were killed in a car accident. I believe my gender transition is one of the longest in history, given that I started testosterone in 1971, had uh, top surgery in Yonkers, New York in 1972, with Maria Martino, and um, I had a panhysterectomy in Calgary in 1978, and finally bottom surgery in Montreal in 2012 at age 60. A total of 41 and a half years. If only cisgender folks knew, truly understood what we have to go through. From 1971 to 2002, I was a voluntary gender worker 
or professional transsexual, now known as a trans activist, providing information, referrals, education, counseling, and peer support to transsexuals and cross-dressers and their partners and families across Canada, the US, and abroad. I also offered free education and training workshops in newsletter and magazine subscriptions on transsexualism, gender dysphoria, and gender reassignment to psychiatrists, psychologists, psychotherapists, social workers, physicians and nurses, as well as researchers, academics, educators, students, lawyers, policymakers, and politicians. Additionally, I provided public education and community outreach through the press, radio, and television. From 1978 to, 20, to 2000, I co-founded and co-led several trans-focused service organizations or peer support groups, such as the Foundation for the Advancement of Canadian Transsexuals, the Metamorphosis Medical Research Foundation, and Gender Worker, and also contributed articles to trans periodicals like the TVTS Tapestry Journal. I earned a bachelor's in psychology from Carleton University in Ottawa in 1975 and a master's in counseling psychology from the Adler School of Professional Psychology in Chicago and Toronto in 2001. I'm a member of the Canadian Professional Association for Transgender Health and co-organized the first CPATH conference in Toronto in 2008. I've published several trans-focused clinical research papers in scholarly journals such as the International Journal of Transgenderism, including my trans-positive therapeutic model and my transformative therapeutic model for couples and families. On top of counseling LGBTI clients, I conducted readiness assessments for hormone therapy and sex reassignment surgery for trans people based on my and Celia Schwartz's 2012 paper, A Collaborative Preparedness and Informed Consent Model, which is published on my website. I also co-edited with Professor Dan Irving, fellow trans activist from Moncton, New Brunswick, Trans Activism in Canada, a reader published by Canadian Scholars Press in 2014 and I'm scheduled to publish my memoirs with Transgress Press in San Francisco in March 2017, and will hopefully publish my international trans poetry anthology the following year with Professor, Professor Trish Salah. To learn more about my work, please check out my website, rrconsulting.ca, the website, A Gender Variance Who's Who, the Canadian Lesbian and Gay Archives website, clga.ca, where the Rupert Raj collection is housed, and I'm also on Wikipedia. After I've had more time to heal and if I feel well enough, I might possibly consider resuming my part-time private practice until I officially retire next February. But burnout or compassion fatigue is an insidious ailment which one does not easily recover. I had originally wanted to give you a brief overview of some of the challenges I've encountered and some of the victories I've won over the course of my gender journey in terms of my tri-dimensional identity as a trans man, community activist, and gender specialist, looking at a number of diverse domains, medicine, psychiatry and psychology, psychotherapy and social work, the law and human rights legislation, religion and spirituality, education and academia, information technology, the media, trans communities, and trans inclusivity in all sectors of society, contrasting then and now, but because of time constraints, I'm gonna have to cut this in half and just pick uh, one or two of those domains. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is trans communities, including trans youth and trans seniors. In the early days of the 1970s, I believe there were only about six or so trans community leaders, counting myself across Canada. We were geographically, culturally, linguistically, and technologically disparate. The 1980s was not all that much better in this country, but the trans movement slowly gathered momentum in the 1990s and into the 20s. Now the trans movement is global, largely due to the internet, but there's still much infighting as exemplified in November 2014 by the stealing of the first ever Ontario trans flag just before it was proudly raised at Toronto City Hall by Mayor John Tory and the Toronto Trans Alliance at the official launch, launch of Transgender Day of Remembrance, stolen by several rogue trans activists, which made us look very bad in the press. I was one of the guest speakers and I was somewhat embarrassed that day to be part of the Toronto trans community. Toronto has never quite got its act together 
in terms of a cohesive trans movement, given that we've had two separate trans marches in the past, each led by factional groups. Locally and globally, we must all put an end to our internal squabbling. The rhetoric often gets too shrill for my ears and pulled together to fight the common enemy, trans societal transphobia and gender phobia. Now switching to uh, youth and seniors. We now have lots of resources for trans and gender non-conforming youth in the larger Canadian cities, including a trans youth clinic at the Hinks Delcrest Centre in Toronto and one at SickKids Hospital in Toronto, as well as a brand new shelter for young trans people in Toronto. But um, there's virtually nothing for older trans people except for the Mature Trans Sisters Group at Sherman Health Centre in Toronto. So in 2015, I designed and delivered a three workshop series for older trans men and their loved ones and allies at the 5119, uh, the 519 Community Centre because I felt there was a real need for this invisible population to reconnect with like others, many of them having lost their family members and partners over the years. Regrettably, my original goal to access funding to establish an ongoing peer support group got stalled at the time because I got too ill, burnt out to follow up and went on uh, long-term disability at that time. But I'm meeting with the program manager in a couple of weeks and we're gonna be looking to access funding for an ongoing support group for trans guys and their loved ones 45 and up. I'd also been a part of the Senior Pride Network and my colleague King and I put on a workshop at the 2014 Aging Conference at the 519 Community Center with us as the two brown and black elders and two black queer youth, and we call it transgenerating and looking at how we can learn, learn from each other, the younger and older trans and gender queer folks and do mentoring. They do brilliant stuff like that in the UK, but in Canada here, we're quite behind, so we really need to focus on getting together, older and younger and in between. We had a great turnout of 45 people, but no one took up uh, our challenge to continue on with the formative work of formalizing the incipient uh, LGBTI intergenerational network that King and I had co-launched with individuals from the 519 Senior Pride Network, Senior People's Resources in North Toronto, Ryerson University, and Sherburn Health Centers supporting our youth program. So I ask, where's the sustainability? One or two people want to do the work and not, and uh, others are either willing or not able or able or not willing. So we desperately need more people to get involved. So I want to talk about the inclusion of trans people in all sectors of society. Oh, did I finish off that piece? Let me just check. Uh, yeah. So uh, presently, trans people throughout the world are steadily being integrated into all sectors of society, including primary care, medicine, psychiatry, psychology, psychotherapy, social work, law, politics, organized religion, education, academia, government, private corporations, nonprofit organizations, charities, the media, and also arts and entertainment. It's a bit harder though for those gender transgressors who more flagrantly express their non-binary gender presentation. And as I've said before and will say again, we still need to work towards greater inclusion of intersex and in indigenous and two-spirit people. There's now an explosion of trans activists, both younger and older, a brave new world on the horizon. Not like it was 40 years ago, there was six of us or so <laughs> across this country before the internet. In closing, I would like to urge all of us to open our hearts and minds to radical inclusivity for all human and animal beings. We must strive towards integrating, but not assimilating, all of our diverse identities and each unique individual across the continuum. The continuum that is that multi-hued rainbow reflecting all of Mother Earth's children. So I'd like to leave you with the image of an iconic metaphor for positive change. The phoenix, a mythical magical bird transcending many religious and cultural traditions throughout history. Like the fiery phoenix in flight, so shall we, trans, genderqueer, intersex, and two-spirit people, and our loved ones and allies, rise above the ashes of defeat and despair and soar upwards to new, to new heights of hope and freedom. 
Together, we shall work towards transforming the world into a better place for all and witness that transformative power of change through community in action. A global community of one mind, one heart, and one spirit. So, my dear friend Nick, and all of my fellow trans sisters and trans brothers and all of our loved ones and allies, let us proudly celebrate ourselves, our diverse identities, cultures, and communities. Trans pride, trans power, thank you.